Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to go over something a little bit different, which is basing. Because to me, basing is one of the last stages of painting a miniature, and it really helps set everything else off. I mean, in my mind, you know, it's not quite finished until the base is on. Now I talk a little bit about context when talking about whether or not a miniature looks good. You know, a miniature might look almost finished, or it might look like a total mess until those last couple of brush strokes of paint are on there, and then finally you have context. And I think basing plays a large part of that. So for example, here, I've got this uh, German Grenadier, and he's just on a plain black base. Now, I painted it in black because it looks a little tidier than when, you know, you haven't done anything to it. Now, this guy is finished, but he still looks like a mess, as opposed to our blokey here, who's got just that black paint on his base. Now, of course, we always take it a step further, or at least I like to, <laughs> and instead go the whole hog and put a base on them, put the miniature in context, because then even a really simple color scheme or a really simple paint job will look all the better. And to give you an example of that sort of in the wild, here is an Iron Hands Intercessor from Warhammer 40,000. Now they are incredibly simple paint job wise, you know, he's black and silver. Now he's had his decals applied, but for the most part, he's just black and silver. He's a very dull color scheme. Apart from his eyes and a little bit on the, uh, you know, this reddish leather I've gone for and his purity seals, he's black and white. He's boring. But we then go ahead and we add a little bit of color and suddenly it all comes together. In context, he looks like this dark and sinister warrior stomping across a battlefield rather than this barely finished monster who's just gliding across black plastic. So to me, this is when things are finished. You know, your mileage may vary as I'm fond of saying, but we're going to talk a little bit about the ways that you have to finish these bases off and really make a big difference to your miniatures. Now, I briefly want to touch on, you'll find things called uh, base toppers, or these complete bases. This one again, this is from Games Workshop. This is one of their plastic uh, Sector Imperialis bases. And you see it's got a little bit of detail in there already. And then what you do is just paint it up like you would your miniature. Now, obviously I've not painted this guy, but you know, the idea is that you just glue your model to the top of it once it's painted, or you can paint it as part of the whole thing. Now, I'm not gonna to touch too long on these. They are out there. Uh, sometimes you'll find these little round uh, resin versions. So you'd need super glue to stick them to a base, but you paint them up the same way as you would a model, and you can use those to inform a little bit of the palette. So there you go, something to consider there. But other basing materials that are out there, and there are a lot, so it pays to have a little bit there. One of the classics you'll find is a bit of PVA and sand. And that's probably one of the most prevalent versions out there. You put some PVA on the base, a little bit of sand, then you paint it up how you want it to look. I'll show you how that works in a minute. I'm gonna go through a couple of these techniques and show you how I like to do them. You'll also find colored textured paints. Uh, now there are a few companies that do this sort of stuff, but Citadel's the one that I tend to use. And these are, quite literally, gunky, oh, I haven't shaken that one up. All right, let's get a proper look. They are gunky, horrible, <laughs> you know, they, they are just a paste which has some color and some sandy sort of material in there. And you just scunge those onto your model's base. There's a little tool thingy you can use for that. You can use a brush, but I like the, the flat side of things for, for how that goes on. And once it dries, it's got a color, it's got texture, you can just dry brush over the top of that and jobs are good and you're ready to rock and roll. As an example of how that looks, here is, you know, it's not particularly, like it's not exciting, it's not uh, crammed with detail, but just that little bit of extra oomph to a model, it adds a color to the whole overall effect without us having to go crazy on the miniature. So I quite like the textured sand stuff as well. So these two are very similar to each other. You will find as well, now this is, <laughs> Unfortunately, this is in German, so I can't tell you uh, what you would find it named. This is 
structure paste. You find this in art supply stuff. It is gunky. It's similar to the uh, the textured paint. You know, it's the same sort of deal where it is. Uh, uh, it's a bit of binding agent, some sandy stuff, and you can add paint to this, or you can paint over the top of it once it's dry. Um, the only downside I found with this sort of gunk is that it can go a little bit chalky. And if you're handling your models a lot and you knock this, it will chip off. So once this is on and painted, it helps to do a little bit of PVA over the top just to help seal it. Um, you know, this stuff, I mean, this cost me three euros. And, you know, it's, it's a pretty cost-effective way of getting a similar effect to these. But just do be aware that there is a little bit more sort of post work you got to do with that to make sure that you're not going to to damage it later on uh, and then one of the last couple of bits is what to go on top of your bases so once you've put down the sand or this uh, texture material you can either go for they call it static grass and that's just with a little bit of super glue and you sprinkle it on and it stands up you know it's it's grass another that i'm liking recently and you'll see this on a lot of my miniatures, are these um, tufts. You know, little, just, they are sometimes random shapes, and you'll sometimes get them which are, you know, just perfectly round each time. But these come from a range of different places, and they are normally got a little sticky backing to them, where you just pluck them off the sheet and put them on the base. Now I like to put a little super glue on the bottom just to make sure they're not going to come off, but you can get a ton of these different things. Brands that I really like, Army Painter you can't beat. Um, I use these on just about everything. They're Mountain Tough, they're Highland Tough, um, they're Wasteland Tough as well, it's pretty cool. Check those out. Warlords do some fantastic ones, uh, especially with the desert sort of theme. These actually look like proper scrubby, you know, growing out of the nonsense rather than just stuck to the base really like these um, and I don't have any handy to show you unfortunately but gamers grass um, if you can <laughs> if you can get past the name and you're not worried about the postman opening up what it is you've got gamers grass do some fantastic stuff too and last but not least there's this old stuff it's a little old-fashioned now some people tend to think which is uh, lichen or lichen I have never gotten the answer on how that's supposed to be pronounced. But this is just dried out and colored, and it's a slightly spongy material. Now how you use this is you literally grab it and you start plucking it, and you get these random rough edges to it. It's kind of like a sponge. Then you use a bit of super glue. For example, I have these Mordian Troopers that I have done with a little of that uh, that basing stuff and then I've painted just little blobs of color so it looks like heather or undergrowth or something like that and I think they look really smart you know it's a deliberately bright cartoony color scheme but again context is what matters here so as ever your mileage may vary but let's get started we're going to go start off with some sand now when you're putting sand on these bases any old PVA glue will do. Helps if you water it down a little because you don't want it to be gungy and thick when it's going on. Now I've already watered this down. This, is, uh, this has had a fair bit of stuff <laughs> chucked into it. But all it is is you get yourself an old brush and really complicated here. I'm just going to dab this all over his base. And you can be quite generous with this. Um, sometimes you want to get a little bit careful around the boots and what have you. Um, or if you want to make a mess, you know, you deliberately want these models to look like they've been stomping through muck or what have you, go a little bit overboard. But all it is, you see this isn't taking me long, it's not hard. It's got a good generous coating and just straight into a little satchel, satchel, a little container of sand. Now I'll leave him there for a couple of minutes just so that a lot of the excess stuff sort of soaks up, leaches through the sand and makes sure it sticks to them. Now a quick note on this, some people actually like to do the sand before they go ahead and paint the model. So while this is still bare plastic or bare metal, 
they'll go ahead, put the PVA and the sand on, and then they'll give it the blast with whatever base coat they're going to use. I personally, I find that's a little bit different uh, because when you've got the paint on the, especially the spray paint on the sand already, I find it tends to use a little bit more paint when we come to color it in. And you'll see what I mean when we get to that. But personally, I like to do this step last. Uh, I think it gives me a little bit more control over what I'm going to do next. So as ever, your mileage may vary and I invite you to give it a try. But the series is how I paint things. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you how I do it. Now we're going to give him a quick shake. Please do this over the, the bucket. Just tap the bottom of his base a few times. And while it's still wet, just run your thumb around the edge of the base, clear off any excess. Now you might find, if we get up close here, that some of this has gone up on the sides of his boots. That's okay. Once this glue is dry, you can take a brush to the sides of it, like a stiff old brush, and just brush it away really easily. Now while our other guy is drying off, I figured I'd take the time to show you how I'm going to do this guy. Now you might remember him from our camo painting tutorial. I very quickly finished him off, added a few highlights, and given him a varnish. Now he's ready to go to the last levy. He's going to defend the streets of Berlin in 1945. So I'm going to base him to reflect that. Now there are a few ways you can do rubble effects and urban basing, but one of the things to point out, and just as a note, you know, rubble as in life on our miniatures should not just be grey. It's boring! <laughs> and if you've ever seen, you know, real dust and rubble and stuff like that, it's never just flat grey. So we're going to do a little cool extra couple of things to make that pop. Now, one thing I should have touched on earlier is things like this, these little chunks of slate. Now slate you can find in a bunch of places. Most places online where you'll find basing materials for your miniatures, you'll also find slate. Um, you can find it in building supply stores. You know, it's just rocks, okay? I've got mine in one of these little Sector Imperialis sets. Um, you get some quite big chunks as well. These are great if you're doing dreadnoughts or huge characters and stuff like that. But honestly, all I want for this guy is a couple of little chunks to represent sort of bigger parts of masonry. So I've got a couple here that I like. So standard procedure here. Let's have a look. I'll put that big chunk on the back of his base. So it looks like he's stepping over something. So get yourself a decent dollop of that. And then... Now this is complicated, this is difficult. On it goes. That's quite a big chunk. So I'm going to do another little one in the front just to balance it out. You know, you can be as generous or as sparing with this sort of stuff as you like, but for the sake, uh, for the sake of showing off how this will look, I like to go a little bit overboard. So there again, whoops. Before that sets on, nudge that forward. Nope, it's set. Okay. <laughs> so there we have these two great big honking pieces of slate on his base. And at the moment, you might think, ooh, ooh that's not going to look very good. But we will go that one step further. Okay, as always, there's more to this than meets the eye. Now I let that super glue dry, and then I've given the stones a quick once over with a little bit of Citadel's Tuscor fur because I like the masonry color it's gonna give us. You could pick any color you wanted to do this sort of brickwork or rubble, but I like the idea of this slightly redder tone, this terracotta look, because it adds to the color scheme while staying in context. Ever that's what I'm worried about, you know, I want it to look like something that would be happening in the world around this particular model. So I've gone for that red color because it'll contrast nicely. So I'm now gonna chuck on some of this textured paint malarkey. I'm still going to give it a bit of a shake, uh, same as you would any other paint. And then, see, look at that gunk. Ugh, ugh. See, it's got a little bit of blue in this tone as well. So Astro Granite is quite nice. So now what I'm going to do is get my scoopy end. Incredibly scientific terms I'm using here as well. And scoop out a little bit from the pot. Hmm, maybe not that much. <laughs> uh, and then trying to keep this in shot while also not spilling it everywhere. 
you just start moving this gunk around on the base, pressing it down. And as you get close to any details, you can switch to the smaller end. Um, but generally speaking, you know, unless you're trying to reach somewhere a little bit difficult, you don't need to. So push this stuff right up to the edges. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to finish this off, and then I'm going to let him dry. Same as with the sand, I want this to be really, really dry before we go on for the next stage. Our first bloke has had plenty of time to dry, and you can see it's not really much of a difference visually. So you do want to leave him plenty of time just to make sure. Now, if we look in close, there's a little bit where it's gone up around the sides of his boots, but that's not going to matter too much once he's actually finished, because it'll look a little bit more natural, like his feet are sinking into the muck a little bit. So, I've got him here, and I'm just going to grab a little bit. This is Rhinox Hide I'm going to use, but you can use any sort of dark brown you want for this style of basing. Alright, so you're watering this down until you reach a sort of consistency similar to ink, and if you watch... Blah, it spreads out quite a bit from where you touch it to the base. You can add as much water as you like here, and frankly I seem to think the more the better, because you don't really need this to cover perfectly. This is all about setting the groundwork and having the colour underneath be nice and deep. If you tend to find that this runs away from the high points on the, uh, on the sand, and it leaves it looking a little bit pale, don't worry too much, because we are going to go back over the top of this with a couple of other colours, using dry brushing, and that'll deepen it up, and you won't have to worry if this isn't perfect going on. So, so this is a technique that works well when you've got a large batch of infantry to do, because by the time you've finished, say, the tenth figure, the first one will probably be close to when it's time for him to have his next step done. So, in this case, I'm going to leave him probably another 20 minutes or so, just to make sure that this first stage is completely dry. Our fellow with the urban base has had plenty of time to dry, so let's get on to the next stage with him. And once that uh, Astro Granite, that texture paint, is finished drying, we're going to go ahead and put on a wash. And with no great surprise, it's Agrax Earthshade. <laughs> now we're going to base over everything with this, so go over your, uh, your masonry as well, because this will tie in together the whole sort of palette. So this just takes a couple of seconds. And you want to make sure you're getting into all these little cracks and crevices too, because if any of this gets left without a bit of uh, Agrax Earthshade on it, it's going to look quite uh, quite bright. So take a second, go around, get all of that covered, and then again, give them plenty of time to dry. Now our sort of foresty looking base is pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead now and we're going to put on the next stage of this, which is an overbrush of a lighter brown colour. I'm going to use Mournfang Brown, um, but on the Vallejo range you might get away a uh, flat brown is quite a nice one for this. And all it is, is just quickly bucketing over the top this lighter brown. You don't have to be too worried if any like big splodgy areas show up where you cover a lot of this brown underneath, because frankly that'll make it look a little bit more natural if it's not so perfect. So you go around, do this, and at the same time, this is a good time to go ahead and do the edge of the base. You might need a couple of thin coats to cover over that, but don't worry too much if you do need to go back and go over that again. So I'm going to do this, and then we'll go straight on to the next stage of this. Now that it's dried, you can see the nice warm brown tone that's given us, but it still lacks a little bit of depth. That darker brown underneath makes a difference, but we're going to go, we're going to dry brush over the top of this with a last color. And for that, I'm going to use good old Tyrant Skull, Cannot beat this stuff, I think, if you come into the end of your uh, your basing step. And as with ever, this is just dry brushing, so lightly over the top of the base. And you may find you go over the edges a little bit too here. But don't worry too much about that, because you can tidy up those edges fairly easily with a bit of more fang brown. This takes all of a few seconds. Bearing in mind that Tyrant Skull dries a little bit darker than when it goes on, so if you get any bright <laughs> really bright splotches, don't worry. In a couple of minutes, that won't look too bad. That dry brush has had time to dry off now, and you see how much of a difference it makes. You know, that's pretty cracking. We've got a proper sort of dirty field effect going on, and pop him down on the table, and he looks pretty cool.
You know, it's a little bit different from a distance, <laughs> but there's one last thing we can do just to finish this off. And that is, I'm going to put on one of these tufts. Now I've gone, this is the, the wasteland, if this even focuses, <laughs> this is the wasteland tuft from Army Painter. And I'm going to use this because it's got a yellowy sort of grass effect to it. So you see, I'm just going to dab a little bit of super glue on its butt. Not much. And then just pick a spot on this model where I can jam that on top of his base. And simple as that. Simple as that. You see, it looks pretty yellowy and gross. Like this is an area that's been, you know, churned up or under bombardment for a while. Or maybe it's just the changing of the seasons and this patch of grass is starting to die off. Now you can mix this in with other tufts as well. Uh, if you want to change up the tone or make one area look a little bit different, you can mix two or three of these on. Same way now, I might want to put on a little bit of static grass. This would be the stage when I just dab on some super glue and sprinkle on that static grass. The best applicators I've found for super glue when you're doing that sort of job is to use one that has a brush applicator. Once the Agrax Earthshade is dried on this guy, you see what a lot of depth and just sort of dirtiness it manages to add to this base. What a difference it is. I have mist in the side of his boots there, but that's not a big problem because we're actually going to go ahead and do another wash. Now I'm going to do a little bit more selective with this one, and I'm going to use Athonian Camo Shade. Because this gives us a nice, deep, sort of grotty green. And what I want this to look like is if areas of this are starting to see some moss growth coming back, um, you know, this is this is just to break up that boring brown. You know, always you want to look at ways to make these things just a little more interesting. So I'm going to spend my time get in behind there, make sure that I haven't missed that still. And this will look monstrously green going on. But places to concentrate on this are going to be around the bases of these uh, chunks of rubble. Just for that mossy look, as if they're starting to grow, grow in. There we have it, that Athonian Camo Shade has dried, and as you can see, once it's actually dried, it's quite a subtle effect. It's not that noxious green that it looks like when it's going on, and it just adds a little bit of variety to the base. And again, urban stuff doesn't have to be boring and grey. The last step to this though, we're going to give it a little blast, a dry brush of Screaming Skull. And why not grey? Well, dust tends not to be grey. <laughs> We're going to go for this just off white color. Now, when you're dry brushing this one on, you want to make sure that you've got almost everything off your brush. All right, you do not want much on this at all. So I'm going to very lightly drag across the top there. There we go, just to get an idea of what I'm going to leave and then start going over the entire base, even the, the bricks and what have you. So with that dry brush done and a quick ring of black gray from Vallejo around the edge of his base, that base is done, and you can see how that last dry brush ties it all together and makes it really look as though he's actually out in the middle of uh, some poor bombed out city. Like I said, looking at this guy for the last levy of Berlin, so, oh dear. <laughs> now, as I've said, these techniques, just for getting the texture on the base, you know, they are universal. What you can do after that is entirely up to you. There are limitless combinations of colors and things that you can stick on the top that will make them fit almost anything. Okay, this textured paint or sand and glue, whichever one you choose to use, after that, it's down to your imagination. Whichever combination of colors you decide to, to work with, almost anything can look fantastic. So as ever, guys, hopefully you found something useful there. I'll get a picture of these guys in a couple of seconds so you can see them properly up close, how they look. As ever, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.